But turn our Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. The title of the message is The Fight of Your Life. The Fight of Your Life. The Fight of Your Life. Again, The Fight of Your Life. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that he cannot do the things that he would. Verse 18, But if he be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Brother Jake, can you prepare for the message? of your life. If you're a saved Christian, there's two nature. There's old nature and the new nature. And they are contrary the one to the other. So your flesh and your spirit, they're enemies. And when we look at the word of God, let's look at verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. When the word lust is, comes out in the word of God, it's the great desire. So the desire, great desires of the flesh is something that the spirit abhors, spirit hates, spirit doesn't want to do anything to do with it. In your Christian life, you do a lot of things that spirit abhors, and that's when you fall into sin. You know, the, there are list of sins that's afterwards, you know, like starting at verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past. In this, in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that you're going to lose your salvation, right? Once you're saved, you're always saved. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. The thing that Christians always, or not always, but most of the time, you forget is that you tend to really, really hurt the feelings of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a person, has feelings, and you disappoint him all the time. How can you? Because he's in you. First, Ephesians 1.13, in whom he also trusted after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that he believed, he was sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So Holy Spirit is sealed within us. That's why, you know, even if you take your life, you commit sin and you die, you'll still wake up in heaven. I said, once saved, always saved. Yes. You know, there's no ways about it. People might mistaken the doctrines or they believe false doctrines. They go to, you know, great, great tribulation doctrines and see verses such as, you know, 
you have to endure until the end. I mean, those are all in a different time. But right now in church age, if you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and Him alone, plus nothing, you're saved forever. I mean, that's the greatest blessing. I mean, there should be more amens here, right? Whether you're here or listening, because without that, you and I will be always in this state of worry. Always will be thinking, where am I going to go after I die tonight? That's the worst feeling to have. But every other religion, they don't know where they're going after they die. Their answer is always, I hope to be there. And I'm working to go there. But us as Christians, we say, I know I'm going to be there. I don't care what you say. I don't care what this, you know, scholars say. I know where I'm going after I die because the Word of God says so. And that is one of the greatest promises. That is one of the great assurance that we have to cling on to, that no matter what happens, if I were to drop dead right now, I'm still going to go to heaven, right? I mean, that's a sort of thing that you can't buy with billion dollars, trillion dollars, you know? It's a free gift, Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And if you haven't received that free gift, I mean, what's wrong with you, right? Yeah. Everybody loves free stuff. I still don't get it. You know, if, if there's a Thanksgiving, you know, those Black Friday sales going on, everybody lines up, especially buy one, get one free, you know, because they love that free stuff. But when it comes to salvation, they don't want it. You know, I'm sure many, many people who's listening, who's here, you try to witness to so many folks in your life, your family members, your acquaintances, you know, your cousins, your friends, you know, strangers. And then you offer them free gift of salvation. They like free everything except that. And that's how human beings work. When it comes to salvation, a lot of times people want to work for it. But nobody deserves to go to heaven. No. I mean, whether you've been the nicest person all your life or you've been the worst person in your life, none of us deserve to go to heaven. Amen. Only by grace of God, you and I can go to heaven. Thank you, Lord. So you can't really look down on other folks, honestly. Right. I mean, there are people who's done, you know, terrible, terrible stuff. But they need to get saved, too. Yes. I mean, who are you to judge when... You yourself, inside of your heart, have killed many, many people already. Amen. I mean, they're still alive. But inside of you, you had this murder of thoughts, yes. you know, killing thoughts, hatred thoughts. All those things happen, right? Yes. If you say you haven't, you're a liar, Amen. right? You're the biggest killer, right? Yeah. You know? So that's why one thing we have to realize is that we are in this fight where our, the spirit is always fighting against the flesh. Yes. That's why it's very important for you to understand that whatever decision that I make right now, it will either please the spirit or it will please the flesh. Right. You can't have two gods in your life. You hear all the verses, right? You cannot serve God and you cannot serve man. You no. cannot serve God and you cannot serve Satan. You cannot serve God and you cannot serve your flesh. Amen. Whatever flesh greatly desires is something you have to understand that Holy Spirit abhors it. If you don't do that, then you're going to lose your fight all the time. You know, I mean, we always have used a lot of sports illustrations. You think that you're winning, but it's just a matter of a second before you lose it. Yeah. Right? Unfortunately, our, I guess, you know, time, this, you know, each game has time, right? We're almost like baseball. Baseball doesn't have a set time. You know, like basketball, you have... But baseball, it's not over until last out is made. You know, game could have been very short, but ninth inning could go forever until final out is made. Our Christian walk is just like that. It's not over until final out is made. Yes. Right? It's not over until we go to heaven or the Lord comes back. Amen. So you could be winning 21 to 2 in the bottom of ninth inning. Right. It might be the hardest out that you could get. And then, you know, you let your flesh take over. 
it's 21 to 5, 21 to 10. Oh, man, I'm throwing every type of pitch, right? And I'm doing underhand, you know? How hard is it for someone to just hit it right to a person or just grumble or get it out or strike out? But they keep on getting hit after hit after hit. Now, think about it. It's 21 to 20 now. You're up by almost 20 points, and you still haven't been able to get the out. And believe it or not, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, give up another hit or home run, and they lose the game. A lot of great Christian men and women lived a strong Christian life, but they couldn't finish well. You know, that's sad, yes. right? You dedicate all your life serving the Lord. You know, you love him with all of your heart. But the end doesn't end well. And that is a horrible way to end your life. Because at the judgment seat of Christ, you can't give excuse after excuse to the Lord. Lord, you know, this is what I did for you when I was 5, when I was 10, when I was 15, 20. You know, when I was like 35, you know, 40. But the Lord's like, man, what happened to you the last month of your life? It's not even a whole year. Last months of your life, you compromise, right? You let the flesh take over. Yes. And you could lose everything just like that. Even like in a boxing match, you could be winning 11 out of 12 rounds. In the 12th round, you become haughty. You become proud. Like, you know what? I got this under control. I just have to just avoid and run away. Yeah. And then you're thinking that, and then you get hit. Hey, right smack on, underneath your chin, you, knock, you get knocked down. Done. I mean, you lost every single, you won every single round, but you lost that one, TKO or KO, yeah. you're done. That's what happens when you don't understand that you are in the fight of your life. Exactly. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. It, it's a verse that many of us are familiar with. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. So you have to understand what Holy Spirit desires is something that flesh abhors. Something that flesh desires is what Holy Spirit abhors. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. So if you know that you're saved and you're pleasing the flesh all the time and nothing's really happening to you, you have no conviction or anything, you just, you probably want to check yourself. Because God is fair God. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. As a Christian, if you live like the devil, if you live after the flesh, you don't get right with the Lord, you will die. It's like, Lord's like, I'd rather have you be with me in heaven than bring bad name to him, be a bad testimony. You read what you sow. So don't think that, oh, yeah, nothing has happened to me. I've been practicing everything that, you know, verses 19, you know, the works of the flesh all the way through 21. Man, God's given me so much grace. And I think that grace is going to just last and last and last. No. I mean, chapter right after it, let's look at chapter 6, verse 7. It says what? Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So, right afterwards, Lord is saying, you know what? You're going to pay for what you've done. I mean, that's something that you and I don't really understand. And that's the, you know, great characteristic of uh, immature Christians. You could be immature even if you've been a Christian for a long time. Right. You couldn't have been a pastor for a long time. You could still act immature. I mean, that's why parents always tell their children. Parents might be in their 80s and 90s. They look at their child in their 60s. They're like, hey, stop doing that. You know, you know, take your hand out of your mouth. You know, <laughs> you know, stop, you know, you know, eating like that. I mean... Parents will always, always teach their children and then, you know, point out the bad habits. But as Christians, you have to understand our fight will never be over. That's why you can't let your guard down. You can't let your guard down. When things seem the best, 
when things are going the best in your life, that's when something really, really tough can hit you, right? Yes. Man, you know, everything's going good. I mean, you're married, you have beautiful children, you have a home, you have a good job, you're participating in every single ministry, and you're doing good. And you're like, oh, Lord, thank you for your blessing. And you're praying and praying. And suddenly, you hear, oh, man, I'm sick. My wife is sick. My children are sick. And suddenly, someone's downsizing. You lose your job, right? And suddenly, you know, sometimes it happens to the couples, like, oh, your spouse just leaves you for no good reason, right? And then what's going to happen in your life, right? Are you going to give up your fight? No. Fight goes on. No matter what. Yes. Fight goes on. For some who's hearing this message, you're like, oh, man, I, I have to give up. You can't give up. Yeah. I mean, it's the worst thing that you could do is to give up. Amen. I'm telling you, if you live such a sinful life, it doesn't mean that you have to give up. No. It doesn't mean that you have to, such a most tragic thing happen to your life. It doesn't mean that you give up. Right. You continue. Amen. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. I mean, Lord has answered for everything. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. If you understand that you're in the fight of your life, your flesh is constantly battling your spirit, vice versa, then you would understand, I have to press on. I have to keep on going. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You have to press on. Now, wherever you are, right? You could be a child. You could be a father. You could be a mother. You know, you could be a grandpa, grandma, in between. You could have this position, that position. You have this responsibility, that responsibility, you're accountable for this and that. You just have to press on, yes. right? You know, first, John 1, 9 says, you know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Just get right with the Lord and just move on. You have to. Because think about it. You just gave up a home run, bottom up nine, but you're still winning. You're still winning. You just have to get that one more out. That's all you have to do. Forget about what just happened. You gave up like 15 straight runs, okay? I'm like, okay. Yeah. Wow, I'm still pitching. Someone still has, you know, faith in me. Someone who's still faithful, they're gonna give me another chance. Amen. And then you gotta be thankful and yeah. do it instead of being scared. Like, oh, man, I can't do this no more. Help me, Lord. No, like coach comes out to the mound. You're like, no, I can't do this anymore. I want to run away. But coach is like, you could do it, yeah. Yeah. you know. But remember, you're not the one who's doing it. Right. You know, there's someone inside you who's going to give you strength to Amen. do it. Right. Then you're like, okay, okay, let me do it one more time. Look at this time. I'm not going to rely on my right. strength. Coach, you told me to do exactly what to do. You said just throw it high up in the air. I'm going to let the ball travel like five miles per hour and get it to the catcher. You just did it. I, mean, I think that's, you know, stupid idea in your own mind, right, right as a human being. But like, I'm just going to trust you, okay? Yes. Amen. You trust me, we're going to get the last out. You don't trust me, we're going to lose the game. Right. And you're going to be in that first page newspaper, you know, and the people are going to hate you for the rest of your life. So trust me or don't trust me. Okay, okay, I'm going to do it. And the announcers everywhere are saying, what is he doing? That's the worst form I've ever seen. You know, he doesn't deserve to be in a major league. And then there, as the ball's traveling for a few seconds, all this. And then even crowds are jeering and booing. <laughs> and then the hitter is like, wow, the easiest pitch i ever seen in my life. And then he's like, okay, time for me to hit a home run, you know, be a hero. And then suddenly... The ball does like a trick, like 360, you know. You've seen it, like going like this. And then as the batter's swinging the bat, and then it just goes up. I mean, ball's here, bat is here, suddenly goes up, and then it comes down and strikes him out. Amen. 
I mean, that's what you and my life has to be like. Glory to God. Let everything, let the Lord do it. Yes. You just got to be the tool that the Lord uses. Amen. Then you'll get the last out. Because to me, you know, in, if you look at some sporting events, worst thing that could happen is that you're winning and you lose. Yeah. If you're already losing, it doesn't matter, right? You know, in a basketball game, you're already losing by 50 points, you know. Oh, what, what, what does that mean, right? Baseball game, you're down by 10 runs. Oh, they expect me to lose, right? But you're up by like 10 runs. You're up by 25 points in the fourth quarter with only five minutes left. And then you lose. Yeah. People remember that all the time. Yes. People remember when people come back or people who chokes and loses. A lot of Christians choke their, you know, Christian victories away yes. towards the end, right? Yeah. And then don't think that I have to be 60, 70, 80 years old to lose it away. No. You could be a child, and because of your attitude and because of your sinful ways, you could lose it for the rest of your life. Yes. Because one wrong decision in your life can ruin all of your Christian walk rest of your life. Amen. I mean, for example, right? The Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yes. After salvation, the most important decision is your marriage. Yes. Right? It's a union of man and woman. Yes. Again, California between union of man and woman. Yes. Right? Yes. And it's nothing else. Right? So, till death do us apart. That's it. Whether you like it or not. Whether you've seen different personalities after the marriage, it doesn't matter. Right. Whether you're fighting a lot more than you ever imagined, it doesn't matter. Unless there's a grounds for divorce according to the word of God, you are committed to each other. Then it's a spiritual battle as well. But if you make the wrong decision from the get-go, when as a Christian, you know that you're not supposed to marry an unbeliever, and you do it anyways, then what do you expect? Yeah. You have done what is against the spirit. You have done what flesh lusts after. Yeah. What flesh greatly desires to do. Then what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> flesh will try to give you these pleasures with, you know, I don't know, like lasciviousness, uncleanness, all this, you know, fleshly desires, you know, fornicating, all that stuff. But it also going to do what? It's going to bring out what? Hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, and all those things. Yes. Drunkenness, revelings. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you know, he's the greatest guy. He's just not saved. She's the greatest person. She's just not saved. Nicest person, best personality. You know, compared to all of our Christian brothers and sisters that I know, man, they have the better personality. I, I know a lot of Christian brothers and sisters in Christ, are, they're the worst, right, human beings. You think. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they have a chance to get right with the Lord always. Amen. Yeah. Because they're saved. Yeah. They have the Holy Ghost in them. Uh, yes. However, unsaved people, their father is the devil. There's cases where guy will straight up lie yes. to the whole family and church. I'm saved. I trusted Jesus Christ. Where's Jesus Christ? He's in my heart. He's my Lord and Savior. You know, I've read the Bible five times already, you know, after I had that marriage council. And, you know, it's like, and they memorize like all these Christian doctrines. But right after the marriage, something happens. The sister never shows up to church anymore. Come to find out, the guy was lying the whole time yeah. just to marry. But can you imagine if you're that sister because you didn't know that you were in the fight of your life and you lost? And then you lose your faith. Think about it. I mean, you're not serving in a local church. You're not getting closer to the Lord. But you lost your Christian life right afterwards. Yes. 
A lot of Christians, that's just one example. A lot of Christians, they do that all the time. It comes to jobs. You know, I know the Lord wants me to make a lot more money, right? You tend to forget, you know, godliness with contentment is great gain. That's it. That's all you need, right? If you have everything that the Lord provided for you, whether you're living up in the mountain, in the cities, in the oceans, you know, as long as the Lord has provided you with you know, things to wear, roof over your head, and then food, then you should be happy, right? That's it. But, you know, you're like, no, I really need to give more money to the church. Man, what an excuse, right? A lot of people always give that excuse. I have to get more, give more money to the church. But you don't even give liberally anyways right now, right? <laughs> you, could, you could tie like five bucks, but you're like, no, that's a little too much. And I'm only going to do 50 cents, you know? you know? Lord has to give me more in order for me to give more. Isn't, isn't that you guys? Isn't that everybody? Isn't that me? Like, Lord has to bless me more in order for me to give back right. more. How foolish. Yeah. If you don't give back, or if you're, if you're not a cheerful giver to the Lord right now, Maybe. you are not going to be a cheerful giver if yeah. Lord gives you more. That's right. Cheerful givers who make $10 but give everything they can to the Lord, right? Yes. Like dollar, two dollars, you know, it's a lot. They're the one who's going to give a lot to the Lord when the Lord blesses them with a lot more stuff. But people who make good money, who refuses to give to the Lord, always arguing that, where does it say? Where does it say? Yeah, Bible says it. Right. Stop arguing with the Bible. Amen. You know, yeah. that person is only giving 100 bucks. So I'm only going to give 100 bucks. Even though that person is that person's really trying hard, but, you know, struggling, but they're giving their all. Even though you're spending so much money on needless things, right? You know? Yeah. And like, okay. So the Lord, Lord would understand. No. You're just justifying your sins. You're losing that battle after battle after battle. And you know what happens? Nobody understands this. Lord could take it away just like that. Amen. And then what's going to happen? Uh, I was a millionaire, but now I don't have nothing. God doesn't love me anymore. God loves you. That's why it happened. Yes. Because he wanted you to get right with the Lord. Amen. I was like, you and I have to understand that we are in this fight, and yeah. we have to continue to fight. So point number one, you know, in order for you to win this fight of your life, you have to understand truth versus tact. Truth versus tact. Tact, T-A-C-T, is often meaning compromising truth to avoid conflict or maintain an image. A lot of Christians want to just maintain their image, right? So you don't care about the truth anymore. All you care about is this half-truth. Think about Ananias and Sapphira. Man, that's half-truth. They're like, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, but they didn't give it all. Yes. And then they had to give up their life for it, right. right? In this battle, this fight for your life, you have to hold on to the truth no matter what. You can't be half-hearted. You can't be compromising. I mean, for example, music is a great example. You know, previous church you know, I went to before I found the truth, you know, they're all a contemporary Christian lovers, music lovers. All they wanted to do was sing, praise, and worship. And they just put lyrics into worldly music. And they think it's praising God, right? They're like, it's always half true. You, you take the lyrics out, it sounds like any other devil's music. Yeah. They bring in rock and roll. You know, they bring in rap. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine? We're, we sing these hymns, right? And suddenly someone next to you is rapping. Like, this is how I serve God, you know, yeah. you know, bringing in all those things. Flesh. I mean, think about that industry. It's dirty. Yeah. Think about the news that's going on out there, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what's happening. And you're like, oh, you know, it sounds so good. It makes me happy. Yeah, it makes your flesh happy. Right. With, but it 
does not make spirit happy. Right. Spirit abhors it. Yes. That's, That's what you have to understand. You can't be saying, oh, you know, I could praise God using this method. Unless it's according to the word of God, it's all tact. Yeah. You're just compromising it, Amen. right? <laughs> uh, for example, okay, you know, I love this person. Same person. But they go to a compromising church, you know. They love to do praise and worship, right? And then they, they have cafes, you know. <laughs> they have a restaurant, you know. I mean, they have this sister's club, boy's club, every club, you know. During the services, you know, they have someone playing in the, in the big screen, but all they do is just chit-chat, you know. Had a British tea club, you know drink some tea, think about their lives, you know, not even paying attention to the word of God, no purpose in the word of God, yeah. the, don't, never want to be rebuked, right? right. You know, and you know, okay, you know, let's go to that church where they compromise the doctrine, right doctrine, and you know it, but you're like, you know, but, you know, it's save people, that's all I want, yeah. right? But it's going to make you worse. Amen. You, you always think that I could make him better. No, you can't. No. Right. I've tried and I've done it. It never works like that. Human beings' hearts not going to be moved because of you in the first place. They move because Lord moves them. And if their heart is already at a place where they will rather serve their flesh than the spirit, we're talking about saved people, they're not going to move, especially if they're a group of people. Yeah. Then what do you have to do? You have to be separate. Amen. You have to get out of them. Isn't that a simple solution? Yes. Get out. I mean, why do you keep on staying in there and right. ruining your Christian walk? Why? Because you're full of tact. You just want to compromise. You want best of both worlds. Uh-huh. Christians, you can't have best of both worlds. Amen. When you're fighting, you know, can you imagine? I mean, Okay, I'm fighting for my enemy, and I'm fighting for me. So I hit my enemies, and I just let my enemy hit me, you know. I'm, you know, so that we could both be happy. Your enemy wants to kill you. Yeah. I mean, our adversary is the devil. Yes. The world and the flesh. Yes. They want to kill us. Amen. And you're like, oh, they're my friends. You know, they're never your friends, right? That's why your acquaintances are very important. Amen. I'm not saying you should turn away from every single unsaved people. Your purpose should be to what? Witness to them yes. so that they can get saved, right? Yes. But they, should, they can't be your best friends of the whole world, right? right? And when, when they're the only one because you're saying that, oh, you know, our Christian brother and sister are all about gossip, tattletales, and all that stuff. There are people like that, okay? But you can't rely on the unsaved world to solve your problems. Right. You have to pray. Amen. Believe it or not, there are some brothers and sisters in Christ who truly cares about you. You know? There are pastors and pastors' wives that you could talk to. Yeah. Right? No good thing is going to work out if you give all yourself to the world or backslidden Christian community. They're only going to give you the advice of what flesh likes. Yes. And that's what's going to happen. You know, a lot of times Christians tend to forget that. Okay. I show myself on Sunday well-dressed, talk well, and then talk about certain things, and then that's it. I go home live my life however I want, and come back and repeat that over and over and over. You are constantly losing your battle. You have to understand. Yes. If you're not same today, tomorrow, and day after, and day after, something's wrong. Right. You're a hypocrite. Amen. Right? If you behave differently here, okay, only hymns, only godly music, but once you get in your car or tomorrow, your station is full of devil station, worldly stations, you know, and you justify, yeah, I'm listening to this godly music. 
Your godly music def definition is music that has God's word. That's it. But the tone and beat and everything is the worldly music. Call it out. Right? Then you are a compromiser. Amen. Then your personal relationship with the Lord will never be the same. Yes. You can. That's why certain people always are like, why am I so bored at church? Why don't I get anything out of the messages? You know, how come when I'm singing, it's not like when I'm singing rap or R&B, you know, hip hop and all those stuff, rock and roll. How come it doesn't move me, Preach. right? Come on. All you want to do is please your flesh. Yes. That's why. You are very, very backslidden. Amen. Simple as that. If singing hymns does not give you joy, if listening to the Word of God does not give you joy and happiness, yes. if being in, within the Bible-believing brethren does not give you happiness and joy, man, are you backslidden? Amen. You're that Christian zombie just walking. Yeah. You know where to go, right? You know where to go. But there's nothing else inside of you. you know, I know how to get there on Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, but no joy at all. You do things very, you know, in a robotic sense. Yes. You just do it because, ah, you know, I was born into it or you know, I've been doing this for many, many years. So I'm just still going to continue to do it. It's like, ah, those, I can't go to those places. It's like, they're so bad. But, you know, I can't go to a different place either. So I'm just going to stay and I'm just going to just... Let the time pass by without my heart, joy, or anything. But that's what's happened to so many Christians. Amen. Because you're not fighting. But people who fight have a life in them. Yes. Have you ever seen animals when they're in the fight of their life? Oh, yeah. They're not lackadaisical. No. They're not lazy. No, they're not just lying down. They give their whole life to yes. it. There's a case where, you know, these dogs are protecting young child mm -hmm. because a neighbor lost the handle of, you know, the big dog. That dog runs after the other dog to protect the child mm -hmm. until someone else comes and, you know, owner from the, you know, loose dog or from the child that comes and then, you know, resolve the situation. That's what your Christian life has to be. Amen. When you're standing up for truth, it's all about standing up with your life. Yes. Think about all the Fox's Book of Martyrs. They stood for truth and died. Yes. They weren't lackadaisical. They weren't compromising. They gave their life for it. Amen. So when you're fighting against flesh, you have to have this attitude of it's you or me. It's life or death. Yeah. If I listen to you, I'm going to die. Simple as that. Amen. If when your flesh is tempting you, and your flesh is trying to make you do it again, the things that you hate to do, you got to say, man, I don't want to die. Yeah. You know, if I follow you, I'm going to die. And think about like drug addictions, right? You know, your flesh is keep on telling you, you've done it before. You enjoyed it. Now you're saved. Just do it once. You don't have to do twice, thrice. No, just do once. Please me. I need that feeling back. You do it, and you're going to be addicted again yeah. and again and again. That's why when those temptations come, you got to say, you know what? Man, I don't want to die. If you do fear God, if you know the word of God, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Yeah. You're going to say, you know what? I can't. Well, even if your hand is moving on your computer or your phone, about to order things that you shouldn't, go to sites that you shouldn't, you're going to be like, oh, Holy Spirit, I abhors this. Oh, you know, Amen. I'm going to die if I do this. I mean, I could die if I do this, yes. right? Yes. You know, I mean, I'm fearful of God's word. Yeah. Galatians 6, 7, I can't do it anymore. Amen. And that's how you got to be. There's got to be some fear of God in you. Because if you don't, then you're just going to live your life like a day, sickle, back, so that compromising Christian. And then before you know it, you know, you're going to lose everything. 
You're going to lose everything as a Christian. You're going to lose your testimony, number one. You're going to bring hurt to you and your family yes. and the church, right? Yes. Local church and the body of Christ, everybody. That's why, you know, you can't take it lightly. Point number two is truth against thrill, right? You have to understand this is a battle between truth and thrill. When I'm talking about thrill, it's about addictions. Why do people become a stronger and stronger and stronger addict? They want more thrill. Sure. More thrill. Yes. Drugs, drug addicts start with marijuana. Ah, it's too easy now. I need to get something harder, right? Math. Oh, it's too easy now. It doesn't give me the thrill. Coke, oh, it doesn't give me as much. Right. Now they go to fentanyl, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's giving me something. And you're dead now. That's it. <laughs> I mean, that's it. that's it. Addicted people will go all the way until they die. Yes. If they don't stop. Amen. As Christians, if you don't fight right by standing up for truth, but going after thrill, after thrill, and as a Christian, you still can do every sin that, you know, unsafe person can do. You're going to be addicted. And you're going to destroy yourself and your family. Right. But think about gamblers, right? Yes. Don't tell me that Christians don't gamble. They do. Many Christians gamble. Amen. Okay. I'm only going to do this, you know, meal money that my wife gave me. Right? <laughs> so you go, okay. Oh, well, yeah, this is a cell phone game. Okay, I do it, right? Okay, you no, know, guys, you know, well, yeah, yeah, the sports betting. Oh, it's okay. You're doing it. And suddenly you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to do more. I save not just one day, but a whole week's worth of, you know, lunch money. Wow. I'm going to do it on that one. Like, oh, the thrills are there now. Once you do it, you're addicted. It's not just multiple times, it's just once. once. And you're addicted. Yes. And then before you know it, you lose your savings, you use your deeds to the house, and you lose everything. Yes. And it's happening. Not only that, what about you know perverted stuff, right? Yeah. Ah, you know. It's just one picture. And oh. goes on to more and more and more. Now you're addicted to pornography. Right. It oh. doesn't stop there. No. It's not going to give you the enough thrill anymore. Now you have to start meeting people. Yes. You know, meeting opposite sex doesn't work anymore. You have to meet same sex now. Yeah, Man, that doesn't work anymore. Now you go to bestiality. That doesn't work anymore. You're dead by now. Yeah. You know, you have your AIDS and whatever it happens, you know, you die. Yeah. That's the progression of human being. When you choose thrill and addiction, over the truth, and you start compromising in your fight of your life, you're going to lose it. It's guaranteed. Yes. Right? Yes. I have experienced it. I'm sure you have experienced Amen. it. When you choose your flesh over your things of the Holy Spirit, yes. you're going to lose. And you're going to be addicted. And you're going to be just like the addicts in the world. Stop criticizing drug addicts over there, homeless people over there, right? Yeah. You're the same. You're actually worse. worse. Yes. You are pretending to be a Bible-believing, local church-serving Christian, but deep inside, you're the worst. You is. commit all those sins. Yes. You're just hiding from everybody, your family, your husband, your wife, your church, your pastor, pastor's wife, teachers. You're hiding from everybody, and you think you're going to get away with it. The fight of your life, you're going to lose it. I mean, Lord said, be sure your sin will find you out. Yeah. Amen. Let him find out right now. Yes. And get right with the Lord. Amen. Instead of progressing any further. In Philippians 3.13, let let's forget it. Forgetting don't, things which are behind. But you're not forgetting it. That's the problem. Yeah. You're constantly going back to it. You're constantly going back to what flesh wants to do. If your daddy told you, if your mommy told you, I hate, I abhor you from seeing that person, but for all the right reasons, right? 
Because if you see that person, that person will destroy you. Not only you, destroy our family. For good reasons, right? Yeah. Then it's going to be always stuck on your head. You know what? I can't. I can't go to that person. Because it's instilled in you and you know how important it is. But when it comes to Christianity, you take it so lightly. Right. Yeah. Lord said, you know, it's going to destroy you. Right? If you live after the flesh, you shall die. You're like, oh, it's okay, Lord. I'm going to pray that you give me more grace. I'm going to pray for your mercy. You think God is a fool? No. no? God is just God. Amen. God is, God has to judge. So he's like, okay. Say all you want. You know, here's my proof. This is what I have to go by. And Lord goes by it. Amen. And at the end of the day, you and I will have zero excuses. Yes. Let God be true, but every man a liar, including me and including you. Amen. So think about it. As I finish, think about this fight of your life. Who are you pleasing these days? Is it the Holy Ghost or is it the flesh? Are you pleasing the world, the devil, more than the Lord? Are you trying to please your family, your world, acquaintance more than the Lord? I mean, what about anything in between? And there's, it's listed there too in Galatians 5. If you are byproduct of all these fruits, then you really need to get right with the Lord. Even before, if not, thank the Lord and still continue to stick to the Lord. At the end of the day, you and I have to realize we're less than nothing. Yeah. We're just sinners saved by grace. Amen. This fight in our life against our flesh, we can never win no. without the Lord. Yeah. You, know, you have to trust the Lord and fight every day. And when that temptation does come your way, tell yourself, now if I do this, I'm going to die. Yes. Don't tempt me anymore. I don't want to die. You know? Some of you might have died a few times already spiritually. Yeah. But thank God that the Lord, you know, gave you more chance. Amen. How would you want to end this game, right? This game of life. As victorious Christian in the Lord? Or are you going to give up that last second shot, last second home run? Be known as the loser of century, right? Let's pray.